Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have tangent 3x on one side and tangent x on the other side. And I will be presenting one method completely and the second method. I'll kind of give you some hints, but I will not complete the second method because um, you can do it. All right, great. So let's go ahead and start with our first method. So first method basically involves using the formula for tangent 3x. But what is it? Tangent 3x can be written as tangent 2x plus x. And from the sum formula, this is tangent 2x plus tangent x divided by 1 minus tangent 2x times tangent x. And as you know, tangent 2x has a formula 2, and tangent 2x can be written as 2 times tangent x divided by 1 minus tangent squared x. This comes from tangent alpha plus beta, where you replace both alpha and beta with x. Obviously, tangent x, if tangent x is equal to 1, then we kind of run into a problem because tangent 90 is undefined, so on and so forth. Okay, now, let's see how we can use substitution a little bit here to make it easier on ourselves. So, suppose tangent x is equal to t. And now we can write the following. Tangent 2x becomes 2t, or not 2t, divided by 1 minus t squared. And if you replace uh, tangent 2x with that here in this equation, we get a formula for tangent 3x in terms of t. Let's go ahead and do it. Tangent 3x, I'm going to replace tangent 2x with 2t over 1 minus t squared. And tangent x is obviously just t divided by 1 minus, if you multiply those together, you get 2t squared divided by 1 minus t squared. And if you make a common denominator here, and forget about the denominators because they are the same, you get 2t plus t minus t cubed divided by 1 minus t squared minus 2t squared. And from here, tangent 3x becomes 3t minus t cubed divided by 1 minus 3t squared, where t is equal to tangent x. So that's the formula we just derived it. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, replace tangent 3x with that. In our equation, remember our original equation was 37 times tangent 3x. It's like, where does the 37 come from? Who thought of this, right? Okay. So now I'm going to replace tangent 3x with 3t minus t cubed over 1 minus 3t squared. And obviously tangent x is just t. Let's go ahead and cross multiply and do the stuff. 37 times 3 is 111. That's going to give us 111t minus 37t cubed. On the right hand side, we're going to get 11t. 11t is a number too, right? Minus 33t cubed. This is a cubic equation, but it's not super bad. It's actually very easy to solve. Let's go ahead and put um, t cubed on the positive side. That gives us 4t cubed minus 100t is equal to 0. And now I can factor out 4t, and that gives me t squared minus 25 is equal to 0. Awesome. I get a really nice equation, and I can solve it very easily. Let's go ahead and take a look at each of these roots. And from here, I get the following. First of all, uh, 4t equals 0 implies t is equal to 0, but that just means that tangent x is equal to 0. As you know, on the unit circle, tangent is 0, where sine is 0, because tangent x can be written as sine x over cosine x, right? Our um, identity helps us in this case. And sine is negative on the x-axis, because sine is the y-axis. So we can safely say that x needs to be power, not power, a multiple, an integer multiple of pi. So like pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, so on and so forth. So I can write the x as n pi uh, in radians, right? Okay, that works. So that's a solution, obviously. Uh, we have to go back and obviously check the original one. So make sure that Nothing is undefined because with tangent, you got to be careful. You know, there are asymptotes. There are some issues with tangent, uh, graph of tangent. But this should work. Okay, because 3 pi and pi are both good. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the other solutions. If t squared equals 25, this implies that t is either 5 or negative 5. If t is equal to 5, that means tangent x is equal to 5. And we don't know an angle whose tangent is 5, exactly like it's not one of those special angles like pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4, whatever. Uh, but we can just inverse tangent both sides, and this gives us x equals 
inverse tangent of 5 plus k times pi. Of course, we have to mul add multiples of pi to get all the solutions. If you want a particular solution, that is just going to be tangent inverse 5. And then, of course, you can add pi to it. And that's going to give us a solution in the third uh, quadrant. So first and third quadrants are going to be our solutions in this case. Okay? Awesome. But that's not the whole thing, obviously, right? We are also going to be looking at the negative 5. And uh, sine and cosine can only take values between negative 1 and 1 in the real world. But tangent is, oof, it can be anything, right? Doesn't matter. If tangent x is equal to negative 5, then from here x equals 10 inverse of negative 5. And I want to be careful here not to use because I've done that before. But uh, these integers don't have to be the same because uh, we can replace them with different um, you know, values at the same time. Okay, so x can also be written as 10 inverse of negative 5 plus an integer multiple of pi. So n, k, m are all integers here. Great. So that's the, basically the first method. Let's go ahead and briefly talk about the second method. Why don't I want to complete it? Because um, even though I know you guys don't mind, most of you don't mind a long video, I still want to keep it a little short and... I want to leave the rest to you. You know, sometimes how it says in the textbooks, the solution is left to the reader. And don't you hate that sometimes? Like there's a really hard problem. You don't know how to solve it. You ask other people, they don't know how to solve it. And then the textbook author says the problem is left to the reader. Maybe the author couldn't solve it either, right? Who knows? Okay, that was a very hard problem maybe. But anyways, the second method is basically the following. And I like the idea of the second method. That's why I just want to introduce the idea to you. Okay, so... Could we turn this into a sine cosine equation? I thought about this problem like, do we have to solve it the tangent way? Uh, and uh, apparently there's a way to do it with the sine cosine. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I want to put these together, but uh, I want to be able to subtract them, but they don't have the same coefficient. So wouldn't that be nice if they were both 11? So here's what we can do. I'm going to split up the 37 into the following. I'm going to write it at uh, the left hand side as 26 tangent 3x plus 11 tangent 3x equals 11 tangent x. Hopefully you get the idea. Now I'm going to bring this over here so that I can factor it. Yeah, that's the whole idea. So let me do a little bit of this. So now I can write the right hand side as 11 times the quantity tangent x minus tangent 3x. Now, it's very powerful to be able to uh, get a difference from tangents because it allows you to use the formulas for uh, sine and cosine. Let's go ahead and write this as sine 3x over cosine 3x. So we're kind of going into the sine cosine world. And here I can write this as sine x over cosine x minus sine of 3x over cosine of 3x. Now something nice will appear on the right hand side. How? If you make a common denom denominator, you're going to get sine x cosine of 3x minus sine 3x cosine of x. This is the beauty of being able to put those two together. And you couldn't do it when the coefficients were different. So you kind of had to manipulate it a little bit. That's what I did. Okay. Awesome. Now, in this expression, uh, the numerator on the right hand side is actually something, sine alpha cosine beta minus sine beta cosine alpha. Isn't that sine alpha minus beta? So now we can write this as sine of 3x over cosine of 3x equals 11 times. Now the, the top can be written as sine of x minus 3x. And that is equal to sine of negative 2x, but sine is an odd function. So I can just put it as negative sine of 2x. And guess what? That can be written as 2 sine x cosine x, and cosine x can be canceled out. We have cosine 3x on both sides that can be canceled out, but we're going to make sure that cosine 3x does not equal 0, and so on and so forth. You're going to get a simple equation from here, and you can just go ahead and solve that equation easily. From there, you will get, and obviously you can use the formula for sine of 3x, whatever that is, something cubic, and you'll get the idea. I just want to leave you with the idea, the solution, the rest of the solution is left to the viewers and the readers. And this brings us to the end of this, to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.